Picking up on that thought, um, Jordan Peterson describes how neuroscientists and psychologists have uh, come to the conclusion that um, the objects that we perceive with our senses um, are, are not necessarily things that objectively exist and that we're just taking in uh, with our senses. It, it appears that we have um, a meaning-making structure and it's kind of like a narrative structure and we, we come into every situation uh, with an aim that um, that is connected to that meaning-making structure and then when we come into an environment uh, we already have that with us and whatever our sense perceptions are taking in it's absolutely molded by that um, by uh, that uh, that structure um, and uh, he talked about the the particular um, difficulties that uh, for example artificial intelligence developers have in making general purpose robots because um, the general purpose robots is like what data what data do you take in? How do you interpret that data? Um, how do you make a context and connections between uh, the data that you're taking in? We're, we're doing that all the time, and that's why we perceive objects in, the, in our environment. And the, the objects that we perceive in our environment uh, kind of uh, follow a hierarchy um, that's, um, that's associated with our aims. So I'm taking... A very simple example, well, okay, for, for example, yesterday when I got home from work, I uh, <laughs> uh, had a long day, so I, uh, I thought, oh, I'll be, I, I do have, I have no food in the house, but I do have one bucket of Pinocchio uh, ice cream in the freezer, so, um, you know, I have this narrative story about hard day, long day, long day at work. Let's uh, let's mind numb for a little bit and have some ice cream. So, <laughs> so I go to my kitchen, and uh, and uh, and I I uh, I open the uh, I I see that there's a freezer door. I know that there's a certain sequence that's going to happen um, in order for me to to reach my goal, which is getting the ice cream. I know there's going to be a door, so I perceive the door, and I know there's going to be some kind of a handle for me to, to manipulate that door to pull it open, and I see the handle there, and then uh, I swing the door open, and once I, I open that door, it's like that 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 door doesn't even exist anymore. It's, it's completely out of my consciousness, and I'm looking right at that bucket of ice cream, and... Um, Everything in my peripheral visual field is uh, is very low resolution if I'm seeing it at all. And uh, gosh, that uh, that bucket of ice cream looks uh, looks really darn good. And and that's uh, and that's right at the top of my uh, perceptual hierarchy, which was was built on prior expectations and kind of a narrative uh, structure as well. Um, that uh, that made my perception come into into being, and uh, and then I just ate a whole bucket full of ice cream. So, um. <laughs> um, but that's completely irrelevant to uh, to what I'm talking about. Uh, but I mean, I'm also reminded of the accounts of. Um, uh, the the natives in the West Indies when the Europeans started to arrive, like just after Columbus and you know whatnot, and uh, you know there are stories about them um, not being able to actually not being able to perceive the ships coming in uh, on the ocean because that whole concept um, was so foreign to them. Uh, and was so out of context for the way that they lived and um, and what they knew is that they couldn't even perceive those things. Now, you could dispute those uh, uh, those accounts, and you know there there's all kinds of questions about the accuracy. But you know, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I've experienced plenty of times where I'm looking for something. And it's right in front of my face, and I don't even see it. It's like it doesn't exist. Uh, I know I look for keys in my pockets, and I swear I turn my pockets inside out. <clears throat> 
and I don't find it, and then all of a sudden something clicks, and I find it right there in my pocket. So, so go figure. And I mean, there's all those sleight of hand tricks that music, the musicians, magicians, uh, do as uh, part of their acts. So there is something very fundamental to our our visual fields is that we're not perceiving an objective world. We're perceiving a world of meaning, and that meaning is inherent, uh, and it's something that we carry along with us. So uh, getting back to meaning, uh, meaning uh, being primary to perception, um, I'm also reminded of uh, one of my favorite authors, Carlos Castaneda, uh, in the teachings of Don Juan. So, um, you know, that's a whole other topic. Uh, I highly recommend getting into those books because they're fascinating. But um, Don Juan was uh, like a, a Mesoamerican uh, Mexican shaman uh, who uh, Carlos Castaneda apprenticed with, with back in the 60s. And um, I remember him saying that the, the reality, Don Juan saying that the re reality that we perceive is just a, a description. So there's there's many different possibilities about like how the human creature could be perceiving and could be assembling all of the energy fields that come in uh, and form perception. But um, but what we call reality is uh, just a description that's been that's been described to us so many times. Like this is a chair, that's a table. This is what you do. This is what you eat. This is you know this is how you go about your day. Is that it's become solidified, um, and it literally becomes what we see. Um, so, so I thought that was interesting, and I do enjoy that there is that convergence uh, between um, two completely disparate uh, viewpoints coming to uh, the the same conclusion um, that I've uh, that I've encountered uh, along my my journey of knowledge. I suppose you would say. Uh, Carlos Castaneda and, and Jordan Peterson, I'm sure. Well, I don't know if the, <laughs> I don't know if Jordan Peterson's read any Carlos Castaneda, but I'm always tickled when when things like that happen. I'm like I'm bringing together a cast of characters uh, uh, in my life and getting them to talk to each other, even if it's just inside of my head, which is kind of cool. But um, um, now now think about this. Um, uh, imagine you accept the premise that you are um, constantly describing reality to yourself. So whatever you're doing in the present moment, um, conscious or not, is, is like a type of code writing that, uh, for your future. So uh, for, for example, so if you're indulging in some kind of narcissistic pleasure, um, you know, which it ter typically characterizes addictions, whatever your, your vice happens to be, um, you indulge in it because you, you don't think you're, you're, you don't think you're authoring your life in it in every moment. You're thinking, oh, I'm just taking this time to escape. Um, you know, it just has consequences here in the moment, but, uh, you're, what you're doing is you're really writing yourself into a perceptual loop of avoidance and numbing. So your future perceptions will be shut out. Um, you know, the possibility of growth beyond that situation uh, will be will be shut out because uh, and uh, you, f you feed yourself more of the loop. Um, but um, but, you know, imagine, you know, you're you also know the possibility of authoring something that's intentional and that can m manifest in exquisitely uh, pre precise details. So, I mean, um, you're, you're, I mean, the, just imagine the field of perception out there is, uh, is, is so, so vast that pretty much, um, anything that you can imagine can be present at almost any given time or the thread of it. So, the example that I give was, you know, the example that I gave earlier, um, so I was, uh, <laughs> I was talking to that guy at work at my uh, previous delivery job, and um, I noticed that he was, uh, he was wearing a, a cool shirt, and you know I didn't know why I had to say something about it, but there, there was something fascinating, and there was just a feeling that I had that 
you know, this interaction is going to lead to something. I didn't quite know what it was right at that moment, but of course I had set, set out the intention as I described, um, and, you know, about a year, two years earlier that I'd want to find uh, musicians to play with that played a particular kind of music. And lo and behold, that was the guy that ended up, um, you know, fulfilling that, uh, that perception and that wish for me. So, so, so it's like you, you can pull at these little threads and th there are just infinite possibilities of, of pulling at these, uh, at these, at these threads. If you've, um, you've set the conditions already for your, your mind to perceive them when they're, when they are, when they are present.